Is there a nefarious plot afoot regarding Catherine, the Princess of Wales, and the recent photo that she and Prince William released on behalf of Mother's Day in the UK? The craziness that has descended upon social media and the news media as well regarding this simple picture is just absolutely outrageous. It's just crazy to me how much people are obsessed dissecting this picture that is really very, very innocent, and so many things in it, I think, have a really, really simple explanation. And yet, this thing has developed into a massive firestorm, so much so that Catherine had to release a statement just saying that, yes, she is an amateur photographer, and yes, she dabbled in a little bit of Photoshop in this picture, but people are putting a really, really malicious spin on it. I think trying to say at the end of the day that basically the entire image is fake, that the kids were all spliced in there, Catherine spliced in there. I've even seen some guy who was saying that, oh, look, her facial expression is exactly the same as it was in Vogue, so they must have taken the Vogue picture and implanted her face in it. But I think the honest truth is, is that yes, maybe there were a couple touch-ups here and there just to address minor things. But because of the nastiness and the toxicity that has descended on social media, it blew up into an unnecessary and completely ridiculous firestorm, oftentimes fueled itself by the mainstream media, which I think is just absolutely abhorrent because so much of this they should know. I mean, I've watched professional photographers at Royal events. I've seen them Photoshop their pictures in real time. So I don't know what they are quite so fussed about. So is there something darker going on here behind the scenes? We will talk about all this today. But if you guys haven't been to Royal News Network, my name is Brittany. I provide you all compelling Royal commentary. So if you want to smash that subscribe button, that would be absolutely 100%. Fabulous. I also have a couple of links down below if you want to check out. I have an upcoming trip to Scotland. I have a deal with Anna Lucia Diamonds. And I have a couple other things down there as well. So if you guys want to check that out, that would be awesome. And so when it comes to this story of Catherine, when I first saw the picture, I just saw an innocent picture of a family together. Three cute kids, their mom all cuddling on a back porch. But of course, of course, the crazies on social media have completely and utterly dissected this picture to bits and pulled out the most minuscule, inconsequential things oftentimes that they say, oh, this could be Photoshopped. This could be Photoshopped. Oh my goodness, this could be Photoshopped. <gasps> what does this mean? And then the news agencies, which I call foul on like a thousand percent, decide to kill the image because it was too Photoshopped. So they needed to kill it to, you know, protect the integrity of journalism, even though an Associated Press reporter from France said that they were all laughing in their office about the amateur photography and Photoshop skills of a princess who is sick and ill and who does this as a side hobby. Yes. Yes, professionals making fun of a woman who does this in order to help capture great moments of her family. Classy stuff there, news media. Classy stuff. The journalisming is going on strong. But I feel like this is also an important topic to discuss because I think what people are reading into this, which is exceptionally dangerous, is that the palace is really trying to hide something, that there's something nefarious going on afoot. But when I look at the picture, and I'm not a professional photographer by any means, I would consider myself much like Catherine, an amateur. But I have actually been to professional royal events with press credentials. And I do have this nifty, nifty, heavy, very highly professional camera here that is much smarter than I am in some ways to capture pictures at Royal events. So I've actually been at Royal events and I've actually been with the photographers. I've been with the press pack. And so I have seen them work in real time. And so I can tell you some of the things I think they're focusing on, and I can show you some of my own pictures as well, I think are more the problems of amateurs trying to do a professional picture. And for some reason, this really irks the mainstream media. So let's go into first, and I would just want to pull up this here. What is the news media so stinking fussed about? So this is obviously from the Daily Mail. They're talking about all the things, the 16 issues that they see with this picture. Now, number one, I 100% agree. Obviously, the thing with Charlotte's sleeve, very, very noticeable. But these other things, I'm like, what are you talking about? So they're like, Kate Sip, top is further left than it should be. And you have to like really close in to see this. But I'm like, your zipper is not always like symmetrical on either side when it's not zipped. So why are you making 
such a fuss about it. Because I think sometimes, too, you're looking at things so hard that your mind plays tricks on you. People wanted to see issues here when some more natural explanations make sense. And I'll get back to the Charlotte thing because I think the issue here, again, is amateurs with a professional camera and having a couple of issues. So we obviously have Charlotte's hair ends abruptly on the right shoulder. I think sometimes, you know, when your hair sort of flips back, it can kind of create a wave. You know, they create fake fake bobs all the time on the red carpet, guys. They do. They do. Again, I don't know what the crazies are talking about. Charlotte's skirt corner appears unusually straight. Again, something that could actually naturally happen. It's not out of the realm of possibility. So I don't know why all of a sudden, again, the Charlotte issue, I think is obvious. There's obviously an issue in the corner there too. But I think a lot of this is utterly and completely made up by people. Charlotte's knee, right knee, appears washed out on the edge, and we'll get back to that. Louis' right hand, blurred right thumb against trousers. Louis' jumper, pattern appears disrupted on right arm. Wonky ledge top, edge stone appears to be distorted. So this is, let's see, number eight right over here. And there's a shadow there. So shadows can always play tricks. Obviously, the big one is right here in the corner. Wonky ledge bottom edge stone appears to be distorted. So this one right here, obviously, as well, an obvious bit of Photoshopping. But I think some of this rest of this stuff, I'm just not so sure if it's what they think it is. Wonky step edge of step against wall is disrupted. So again, all of this over here. Louis' left hand, little finger seems to end early. Again, kids move. Kids move. What is she? I mean, isn't that shocking? Isn't that totally shocking that a child might move? Oh, the horror. The horror of a child that moves. I, I can't imagine that happening. Can you? All right. We have George's right arm. Edge of jumper looks artificial. Okay. I think that's up to interpretation. Kate's right hand, a blurred hand, but jumper unblurred. So, I mean, you can see her hand. Again, this is just so. So ridiculous. Kate's hair blurred on right, but jumper is unblurred. Charlotte's hair right on hair dip in unnaturally. George's sleeve odd lines appear on the jumper. And I just look at that picture and I go, golly, some people have just way too much time on their hands to be finding all these things. And yes, obviously as well, the big thing was Charlotte sort of disappearing sleeve. A hundred percent. I understand. And obviously you have this bit over here in the corner, which is very noticeable. But I think too, this could be actually the ledge being sort of cut off. I think that might be the effect there that people are so, so miffed about. And then softening here of the edges again, I think I think I might have an idea of what is going on, at least in some of this. And I'll just show you guys my own pictures just to demonstrate what these could possibly be. But overall, the idea I think that people are going with, what people are so fussed about is thinking that this is an entirely contrived image that perhaps it's not even Catherine there. The kids were taking pictures at different points and then it was all spliced together. I don't think that's the case. I think, that, again, this is probably a natural picture. I think they were all sitting there getting this picture. But obviously, children move. Life is not perfect. And so in order to try to create an image, because Catherine, unlike the vast majority of us on planet Earth, do not have millions upon millions of people waiting for this picture. Most of us have pretty normal lives. So it's just our family members on Facebook or something like that. So we don't have so many people looking at this. And I think some people too are like, well, Catherine's doing worse and they just don't want to show that. And I think somebody else I saw said, well, TMZ showed a picture of Catherine from last week in the car. She doesn't look anything like this now. And I'm like, okay, under, number one, that, car, that picture was taken from yards away maybe hundreds of feet away, maybe not that far, but like tens of feet away, at least in a driving in a car with a distortion of a window. If you've never actually taken pictures of people moving in a window, it is surprisingly hard. I found that out at the Prince Dogs Day in the Netherlands when I was taking pictures. And it took me a while to get to because I have this nifty thing on this very, very expensive camera here that allows me when I'm doing manual focus, because the better you get, it's actually so much more important to do everything manually because of that you have to manually adjust and i do have a nifty thing that actually helps me it actually 
enlightens in sort of a pink color, the more in focus a particular thing is. So while that is helpful, it's not really helpful when you have glass in the way and things are moving and people are moving quickly. And when did you know it? It is hard to kind of get that adjustment going. So my first couple of shots, uh, they were blurrier than I wanted them to be. Some of them got better. And I, I need to do it more. I've, I haven't been in the royal photography game since September, but my experience was that it is hard. And so these are not professional picture takers. This is a family. And this is, I think, most likely Prince William being part of this and putting this picture together. He is the one who actually took it. And he definitely knows less than Catherine did. And I would imagine personally, this was probably taken with a DSLR. DSLR is like this camera. I have a Canon R3, and so it is a mirrorless camera. It's the highest end mirrorless camera on the Canon line. I have that because I can take pictures really, really quickly and not overheat or die on me, which I had one do. It was fun when I was at the dog and duck taking pictures of Catherine and William. Why didn't you know it? My camera froze after they went in. Thank goodness it was after they went in. But I had a couple of minutes there where my camera was like totally dead, not doing anything. And I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Because <laughs> I was like... I really, really wanted my camera to work. So I upgraded to this one because I want to go and take more pictures at Royal Engagements and stuff like that. That is what I want to do so I can have my own catalog of pictures. But overall, to say these things are complicated and sometimes too, depending on the lens, depending on the distance of your picture, some things will be in focus and some things will be out of focus. So I just wanted to share a couple of explanations of what could be going on here. Because I think, again, and I know that the industry itself does know this. That's what's scary is that the news industry 100% knows that this could be the case. And I feel like they're going with it anyways. And some of the issues that you can have as you are taking a picture. So this will be one I took at the Louvre. And so this is not at a royal event. But one of the things I also do is I also run a fashion channel on royal fashion. And so I enjoy sharing and taking pictures of royal jewelry. And I did at the Louvre because they have tiaras and some pretty impressive pieces there. And what you'll notice about this particular diamond bow is that really at the top, and, and it's not even remotely perfect, guys. So don't even go, well, it's still not. I know it's not still not in focus, guys. I do. But the big thing here is most of this in the center of the image is in focus. And the further you get out of the center, so down here, the less in focus it is, especially if things are behind. So again, remember, this is Prince William taking the picture. He is far less competent in this area as far as we're aware than Catherine is. So it's entirely possible that the blurring effect that some people are complaining about is simply the fact that something is further back and it's just out of the range of what the lens is focusing on enough that you're getting a bit of a blurry effect. Just saying that's entirely possible. That what they are seeing is not this malicious thing where they're trying to splice pictures of the kids together from different events and making them look like everything is hunky-dory and nothing is wrong. But in fact, that it's a lens. You have amateurs behind the lens like me. Oh, I don't know always what I'm doing. I actually have a special lens that I want that it's, I'm going to call my tiara lens. I don't have it yet. But it's going to be my official tiara lens at some point. It's a very expensive lens. So I haven't gotten it yet. I'm like, I don't think I can grab that right now. But the purpose of that is, again, is to show that things are not always up here. And again, the news media 100% knows that this could be the case. 100% they know. They know. Because I mean, again, even whatchamacallit, they made fun of Catherine. The, it was the news agency, the Associated Press basically sounded like in France, made fun of Catherine a bit in their newsroom going, oh. Well, we want to hire her because her pictures aren't good enough. I was like, well, A, she ain't applying to be part of the Associated Press in France. So you can take your little prissy French things and shove it. But at the same time, 100%, it's something that happens. So let me see. I do, do, do. Okay. So this is a picture I took. This was at the Swedish Golden Jubilee. I took these pictures in September. And unfortunately, the sun had set. And again, I am not a professional photographer. I am learning and I learn on the fly. And so this is a picture of Princess Madeline of Sweden. The sun had gone down. And if you do not know on these cameras, especially if you do a manual setting, which is basically all you can do, especially in this camera, is you have to adjust the settings every single time the sun even dips a smidge below the skyline. All the less light you get results in having to change aspects of this camera. 
And so I failed in this respect. I 100% failed. But you'll get the effect here. So you notice Princess Menelin's hand is moving. So when she's still, she's mostly in focus. Unfortunately, I think the woman in front of her is in better focus. But again, or maybe in the photographer behind. Again, this is a failure on my part. But look at her hand. Her hand is moving. So you're getting this blurry effect where it almost looks like she has two thumbs. Princess Madeline does not have two thumbs. That is what happens, though, when you take pictures sometimes and the settings are wrong. So I wonder if Charlotte in particular perhaps moved a bit too much and Prince William happened to be taking the picture. And based on the settings of the camera, it's entirely possible her hand was in two places and it either wasn't edited out or they tried to edit it out and it was just a bit of a fail. I mean, again, life happens, right? Of course, you never want it to happen on the international stage like Catherine, but it's entirely possible again that this is what happens. This here, this this double thumb or whatever situation that you're seeing is just and like these weirdly elongated fingers are just an effect, guys, of my crappy picture taking. <laughs> and not to say, I think Catherine's better than me. But but again, here's the a different picture where you can see there is absolutely nothing wrong with Madeline's hands. It's just a trick of having the wrong settings at the wrong time and resulting in different things. So actually her face is a little less in focus than what you saw in the previous picture, but her hand's a bit more in focus. And look, nothing is wrong with her hand. So yeah, it's still not in great focus. But again, you kind of get what I'm trying to explain here is that yes, Things sometimes, depending on, again, the focal length of the lens, this is a 70 by 200. I think I used that for this, that event. I might've used my 100 to 500. I might've used my 100 to 500 now that I think about it. This is a bit of a different lens. This is not quite as long as a 100 to 500 because it's only a 200. And so, and it's very, very heavy, by the way. So you need this little thing so you can actually rest the camera and the lens on a, a tripod of some sort. Otherwise it's so heavy. It is very hard to hold for long periods of time. You, it will make your arms hurt. And so this guy, when I was taking that picture, I had, again, the wrong settings on. So you got a bit of that blurred effect. And so again, I can see 100% why that might be possible, especially depending on what lens you use. Because I think the lens I used when I was at the, the Louvre probably wasn't the right lens. Because I think if I had a different lens, I could have gotten everything better in focus. And of course, the news media, they're not removed from, of course, editing a picture of Catherine to perhaps suit their needs. This is one famously from the Remembrance Sunday. This was, I think, in 2021 or 20. No, it would have, how do it would have been in 2022? And so I remember this picture. I honestly did think that the the hood or the um, bill of the hat or whatever actually did shadow and, and did make Catherine look a bit older, but it wasn't this bad. This was entirely... Somebody in, I don't know what they did exactly, but somebody made this look worse than it was. It wasn't great. It wasn't great already, but they definitely made it look worse than it was. So the media who is complaining about Photoshopping, oh, they might be doing the same thing. Who would have thought? So I just guys as well wanted to show you guys a, another picture here and explain to you how the Royal Photographers work. Because unlike perhaps you could say a lot of people, I've actually seen the Royal Photographers work. Now, not everybody has, but at least some people definitely have. And so this is a picture of Princess Alexia of the Netherlands. And I was not in the prime position to get a great spot for when they initially got in the carriage. There was a bunch of photographers in front of me. So I just focused on getting their pictures after they left. But this guy got this crazy great shot. It's actually a couple of them, this one and this one as well. And I believe this one is the one that was used most often. And even in a picture of a magazine, he got this shot as she was getting into the carriage. So guys, when it comes to this picture, what happens is after the photographers take the pictures, they need to get them to the wire very quickly. So what they do is they pull out their laptop, open it up, put their card in, and then they start reading the pictures. They choose the pictures that they want. And when it comes to this particular picture, and I'm so bummed I did not take a picture of him doing this at the time. I saw the photographer with this particular picture editing it in real time. He was going in there and editing it and cleaning up the image because that's what they do. They do go in there and they do edit the image. Now, granted, again, the whole situation with Catherine a little bit different, but they are professionals. And so what they do is they try to make the pictures look the best they can so that they can 
sell them more readily, make more money, you could say. And so I saw him editing this picture in real time. And I did see a lot of the photographers actually take out their laptops and stuff. And it made me think they're, dang, I really need a, an international laptop. So when I take pictures, I can get them done quickly. So I actually need to, that's a project I need to work on for my next trip, whenever that happens to be. But that's just to show you guys that this definitely a hundred percent happens. They a hundred percent do manipulate the images. Not, not terribly greatly, but it does happen. And I did want to show you guys some other, when it comes to the Netherlands, they have a couple of pictures. I'm like, Ooh, lots of Photoshop probably going on there. So this is the first one. And this is a picture of the kids when they were younger. So the king and queen, they have three daughters. And so this is a picture of them. And this, again, you can just tell, like, the pictures were taken. I honestly believe that they were all composited probably into this shot. That is my personal opinion. I do not know that for sure, but I think they were all maybe composited into that shot, that they were shot individually and then put and spliced into this. I could be again, totally wrong. But this picture is just, you can just tell that they did a lot of work on it. And again, that's not necessarily bad. It's not necessarily bad, but hundred percent they could. And then I got, there's this other one from the Netherlands. And this one is just, I feel like so iconic. If you're been a Royal watcher for a long time, especially if you watched the four, <laughs> you will know this picture. And it is of the Royal family of the Netherlands again. And it is just so stinking funny. It's this picture. I mean, it almost looks like it's, it's it's sort of the composite of the picture, how they put the picture together, but it does literally look like they were all photographed individually and spliced into that or that they were walking somewhere else entirely and then spliced on that particular surface. Now, you could argue that that's not the case there because we do. You can definitely see the king's shadow right there. It's very strong. You can see her shadow. You can basically see everybody's shadow. Actually, the picture quality here is so good that you can pick up that Maxima is wearing Louboutins by that little bit of red on the heel there. And so it's just funny because it just looks so weirdly fake and perfect. I would say Maxima looks very good here. And this was when she was a little bit younger. The king here looks particularly good, but I got a picture of him and I was looking at my picture from him when he was at the carriage. I was like, whew, there's a lot of wrinkles on that face. No offense to the king, but it's just something I noticed. It's like, oh, the quality there is really good. I would imagine that some anti-aging was done on both of their majesties here in this picture, perhaps some cleaning up of the girl's faces. Maybe they had a blemish or two and they cleaned those up. So, I mean, of course, Photoshop happens all the time, especially in the public images. And of course we have as well, which I forgot to bring up a, at first, but you got the times magazine pictures of Harry and Megan. This is the most Photoshop thing I think I've ever seen. It is just so obviously, obviously you got this here. I mean, guys, that picture is way too perfect. Harry has more hair. I mean, obviously he's lost a lot of hair even since these were taken, but this picture is just like, it's so ridiculously perfect. It's, it's almost, it's like insane. Like this whole background essentially almost looks fake. And I, I'm, it might actually be real, but it almost looks fake. It's just too, too perfect. And of course you have the famous hairdresser pose from Harry and Megan. And you can see it here in this so Terry looks totally faked behind her and obviously more hair for Harry. Megan there is just too perfect. And you got these two again, Harry's got hair. There's just, there's just a little bit of a too perfectness to these pictures to be real. And actually, ironically, when it comes to Harry and Megan and Archie, I've always been of the personal opinion. Now, this is just my opinion. I have no true, true evidence yet to back this up because I feel like we haven't gotten a decent enough candid picture of him to be determinate on this. But I've always been under the impression based on the pictures I see that Harry and Meghan actually make Archie's hair redder than it actually is. So guys, just as a reminder, this is how Archie has been portrayed in the pictures with Harry and Meghan for Christmas. So you have here definitely very red hair. You can tell maybe Lilibet has a bit of that too. And then you have over here as well, Archie with seemingly red 
hair. And this was obviously a composite picture, not a totally real one. And then you have some of the more candid things we got from, from the reality TV show and where his hair looks a little bit different, in my opinion. So you can see here in this picture, Archie's hair to me looks more brown or maybe auburn than red. You can even see this here maybe a bit as well, although it's a bit distorted with the coloring and everything. But it's just hard to tell. And I just find it totally ironic that he might not actually have totally red hair as they've portrayed him to have. But of course, it's hard to be definitive because we haven't really gotten a clear, clear picture of him because Harry and Meghan like to be finicky about things. And to be fair, in regards to Catherine and William, I do tend to believe that this picture may have been photoshopped. This is sort of the famous one that was initially suggested at one point, And I would lean on that a bit. William perhaps looks like he has a bit of a different light compared to the rest. And again, I don't really have a problem with that. Maybe he was super busy and couldn't do it on the day they could or whatever. I do think they still look super cute. A lot of people said too, it looked like Charlotte was just floating in the middle of the picture. And again, it might've been that it was just hard to get two children, two very young children at the time to smile correctly at the same time. Although I feel like that, that answer diminishes a little bit with Catherine and William now that their kids are a lot older. But what perhaps shocked me the most to a certain extent was Piers Morgan because he wrote a whole piece about this debacle in the New York Post talking about how we need the royals, the secretive royals must come clean because they don't know about, you know, What's going on with Charles? Catherine says, but the conspiracy theories about Kate Middleton's secret health crisis and disappearance from public life made worse by the manipulated family photo she posted yesterday when added to the unsettling confusion over what cancer King Charles is suffering from and how serious his condition is have shown that the old pal's way of handling the media has become increasingly obsolete and unworkable. The problem is social media. Yes, it is. With the absence of facts, platforms, like X, formerly Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok have become 24-7 hotbeds of wild royal gossip and intrigue. Some of the stuff I've read about Kate is mind-blowingly false, dumb, and downright offensive. Similarly, I've been stunned by the avalanche of ill-informed crap that's being spewed about Charles. But is it really any surprise that the public has surged into such controversy, conspiracy mode, given how little they've been told about the health of the two most famous people on the planet? I would offer that the answer is no. The reality is people are just kind of dumb sometimes. <laughs> that is sort of kind of the answer. This is dumb. This is dumb. There are perfectly logical explanations for this. And I think everybody jumping on the conspiracy train doesn't make a lot of sense because they gave us the answers that we wanted. In fact, there was a recent YouGov poll that came out that showed that most people, about half the country in the UK, I believe, let me look up here real quick, said that they're perfectly fine with the amount of information that they know on Catherine's conditions. 49% said about right. So if 49% of UK citizens believe that what they've received on Catherine is about right, then what are they talking about? Because to me, the information that you, the UK was given or that the palace gave made a lot of sense to me. It was just said she had abdominal surgery, that it was planned which means, again, could be planned short-term, long-term, but I think definitely short-term, and that it was probably serious given the amount of time that she had to recover from. There is nothing in the rule book of royalty that says you have to give explicit details line by line about whatever medical condition you're suffering from. You do, you should have the respect of privacy given to you from time to time. And yes, the absence of Catherine is a bit frustrating, but the chaos and conspiracies online aren't being driven by people with the best intentions. They're being driven by people who want to cause divisions. They're being driven by people who want to be part of whatever Sussex squad thing is going on. I think a lot of it is driven by Sussex squad and people who hate the Royals. It's about people who hate the Royals who are complaining, not other people. Now, other people, I, when I first heard the news, yes, it was frustrating. Yes, I was like, oh man, some of my royal coverage events I was thinking of were sort of blown out of the water. But having had some pretty serious surgical procedures myself, I also knew that sometimes recovery takes time and I don't have any issue with her doing that because, hey, 
We all have health issues and there is nothing in the world that says you must tell the world every nitty gritty detail of whatever procedure you had to satisfy the mob. Because if the pound starts to just do things in order to satisfy the mob, where does it end? Piers Morgan and others are demanding that the palace show us the real picture. No. Why would they? They shouldn't. Why? Because you guys have been such a disaster with the first one. Why would they give you another? You would pick apart the other. And even if it was composite of a couple of images together because it was hard to get the kids to laugh and smile at the same time in the same way, who cares? At the end of the day, who freaking cares? It's a picture. And it's not something that's trying to rewrite history. It's just something that's trying to give us a little snapshot into their lives because we don't know how serious this procedure was. We don't know how life-changing for Catherine it has been. And she deserves to have a chance to rest, recuperate without idiots on social media, making a fuss just because they hate the royals, they hate Catherine, and they are perhaps pro Harry and Meghan. Because that's what I think. And I will say, too, I've been disappointed by a lot of the journalists. Chris Ship from ITV has asked, he put up in a comment, can anybody tell me what shrub this is? And I'm like, what shrub is this? What do you mean? So hold on, let me grab the picture here. I mean, come on now. Any good horticulturist out there who can answer the leaf question on the Kate photo? What is the plant in question? And should it be this leafy in March, early spring? Well, I don't know about you in the UK, but here in the United States where I'm at, spring actually came really, really early. Like we're getting ready for 80 degree temperatures. And that's pretty rare. It's going to hit almost 80 later this week, which is insane given that it's early March, mid-March. I don't know what the temperature has been like in the UK, but some things actually leave early. Some things actually don't lose their leaves during the winter. Am I trying to... I feel like I'm trying to explain gravity to a chicken. I've, I've used that quote before and I love it because this is stupid. This is so incredibly stupid. Because this is not trying to rewrite history. And yes, maybe if Catherine's in a bit of a worse spot than we know, is it really necessary to drag everything to make such a fuss? We have been told that this was taken earlier this week. I believe it. Because honestly, the media is making such a mountain out of a molehill or even like an ant hill, Like a single ant made a millimeter little mound. And you guys are making such a disaster out of it. And it's so sad, too, to see a lot of the big photography companies bending to the will of the social media mob. Yes, obviously, there was a bit of Photoshop here, but but we don't even know what Catherine's condition was when she did it. She maybe have been rushed. She may have still not been feeling well. She may have been struggling to try to get it done. It's like, but I need people to see this. And there is no requirement that a professional photographer must be there in order to take pictures. It is nice sometimes that Catherine and William take their own pictures, that it doesn't always have to be some sort of super Masson Harryman photo shoot like it has to be with Harry and Meghan. Catherine and William can do the simple things and they should. It makes them relatable. But this sort of stuns by journalists like Chris Shipp, all it does is make a disaster out of the whole thing. And I think some people are reveling way too much in this. And some people have posited as well that the media is actually frustrated because since Catherine and William took the picture, they can't really make any money off of it. And I think this will result in Catherine and William sharing fewer pictures with us because morons just can't let something go. They think they're better than everybody else. And they got to tell us all the truth behind the scenes. And so guys, let me know what you think about this video. Let me know what you think of this stupidity online. I'm so sick and tired of it. Can't even begin to tell you guys, but I would love to get your thoughts too. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon. Bye.